Hey everybody, welcome to my first toy review. Uh, today we'll be reviewing the Hasbro Civil War 3-pack. Um, I did a review before, actually yesterday, on uh, one of the figures in the pack. Today I will be doing a full review with uh, the other two characters. And, uh, well, without any further ado, let's get away. Let's get it underway. So, um, I'm not going to do what some people do, where they do the whole unboxing thing. I'm not into that, and I'm pretty sure most of you aren't either. I'm not going to waste your time. I will show you the box for those who have not seen it or may care. Okay, so you have the three characters that come in the box. Yes, Spider-Man's in this box set uh, from the movie, Captain America and Iron Man. Uh, as you can see, the side shows Iron Man. Then you have the front with the window. Um, as you can see here, you have two, uh, I believe those are the engines or whatever it is that powers Iron Man's um, ability to fly, and then you have the repulsor rays, or vice versa. I'm not exactly sure which, which but it doesn't matter. You can fit them in bo both pegs, which I'll show you later. Um, but yeah, so basically you get a nice little added effect, which you never got before. At least from what I understand, you only got two, never the four. So now you got four, so that's cool. An incentive for you to buy the figure. Um, comes with a couple of other incentives besides Spider-Man, but we'll get into that a little later. So moving right along, um, you're going to start, we're going to start off with Captain America. So, here you are, Captain America, good old red, white, and blue. Uh, pretty cool figure. Uh, he's probably my second Captain America figure. I had another one years ago when I actually had the um, ultimate Captain America figure. Uh, this is before I lost all my figures in storage, but that's another story. So, yeah, this figure is pretty cool. Um, great detail, as you can see. I don't know if you can catch all that. But great detail. I'm um, not going to get too much into the detail of the figure. Only because of the fact that, uh, for the most part, you can see a lot of the detail for yourself. Once I show it up close, I apologize for having such a crappy camera. Um, but it is what I have to work with. And it's more important that I get the review out to you guys so you know what to expect than to worry too much um, about the quality of the video before I make it. So, um, as I was saying, the Captain America figure is pretty cool. Um, I have three gripes with this. The first gripe is the fact that you're going to give us a Captain America figure again. And even though I don't have too many of them, it's just the fact that it's annoying me and I don't even collect Captain America. Uh, you give me a Captain America again. And although it looks nice, you give me a battle damaged Captain America where he's not even battle damaged. He's either dirty, if you want to call it that, or maybe some singed burn marks, but... He's not really damaged. I don't see any tears in the clothes. I don't know. Maybe the clothes is made out of, uh, I don't know, vibranium or something. Whatever. Um, but yeah. Um, you give him just two hands, whatever. I don't know. I'm guessing that Captain America never came with more than two hands. But it would have been nice to have some extra action poses with the hands. Um, then, as an incentive, <laughs> as if to make us feel better about it, you give us the Steve Rogers head, which is great and all, but... Doesn't look like Chris Evans, now does it? So, a little tidbit for people who are kind of nerdy like me. Basically, Chris Evans doesn't make as much as Robert Downey Jr. So, I guess they can't afford to have his likeness on the figures. Um, with that being said, he does come with a second hood, or a second helmet, which is right here. Oops. Which is right here. And, uh, ironically, this looks more like Chris Evans, as you can see here. Looks a lot more like Chris Evans. Then say this one, this looks more like the comic book version. This looks more like Chris Evans, but I'm going to assume that you get paid a lot more money uh, than you can have the figure look like you. Other than that, you have to have your face covered and you don't get as much money for the figure. Don't know exactly how that works, but I'm going to assume that's what it is. Um, so yeah, uh, going to go over the articulation real quick. I'm only going to do one side because what you can do with one, you can do with the other unless it's a gimmick figure. So, basically, whatever I show you on this side, you can do pretty much on that side. So, you have the 360, of course, as typical figures for the shoulder. Shoulder joint goes up that high, comes that close to the body. You have the double joint, as always, with the elbow. You have the wrist swivel, as always. The flex, as most of the time. Um, you have the crunch. Which goes down, you know, okay. I mean, I don't see too many crouching poses. I can't think of any crouching poses that'll, you know, right now. But 
Eh, whatever. Then you have the lean back, which again, I don't see too many leaning back poses working. Um, head on a swivel, 360, up, down, typical figure. Um, pretty easy, it's on a ball joint. As you can see, this way you can swap the heads. Um, you have the waist swivel. This belt actually slides up and down. It is a belt that is not sculpted to the figure which is good, especially for those who are customizers. Uh, typical problem with a lot of these new Marvel figures, you have like very little to no give on the weight, on the leg span when it comes to doing sidekicks. So you have to get innovative, if you will. Um, yeah, you have to bring the foot all the way up like so. Then there's a joint here where you twist and I'm assuming after you do that, you go and you do the same here, where you twist, and that there is supposed to be your sidekick. Yeah. Crap. Uh, I would say something else, but there's probably children watching this. So, uh, moving right along back to the knees, double knees as always, as you can see here. Um, nice little top of the boot swivel. Some of the figures still retain them, some of them don't. You have the angle pivot up that far down. Pretty decent range of motion. Great little rocker. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for the Captain America figure. Um, as you can see before, I had a shield, which I will get into a little later, because the shield is his, but it's not really the reason that he came with it this time. But we'll, we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, the next figure I'm going to review is Iron Man. Uh, yep, you know what that's for. But, uh, yeah, so, we got Iron Man here. Um, not much really to talk about. Um, gave you a nice standard Iron Man figure. Of course, again, another Iron Man figure, another Captain America figure. Apparently, uh, Marvel is pushing these figures because it's Civil War. And, well, they've been pushing those figures for a long time. I don't know why, but whatever. They've pushing those figures for a long time. You keep constantly getting them. I think maybe because of Civil War and the whole build-up to the Avengers, and these are the main Avengers. So you're going to keep getting them rehashed. Uh, again, battle damaged, but not really. Um, just singed mark or dirt, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah. Now, as I was saying before, if you notice, Robert Downey Jr.'s likeness, spot on. And that says a lot, considering that Hasbro's sculpting when it comes to faces is, eh, give or take. But yeah, as you can see, spot on. Um, pretty awesome. Uh, this is great for if you have like characters with suits such as Coulson or if anybody happened to get the uh, um, communion figure with the suit Just pop that head on there. Hopefully it matches the body uh, But yeah, just pop that head on there. You got yourself a Tony Stark in a suit I think some people have done that already. I don't have those figures. so I can't do that. But um, yeah, pretty cool uh, He has an, A damaged mask or helmet as you can see unlike Captain America you actually see some damage in there but you know not a lot, but yeah, for the most part. Now, my only other gripe is with this particular figure, if he's battle damaged, if you remember in that scene where they have like the big airport fight, um, yeah, there was a giant bruise right over this side of his face, if I remember correctly. And no one ever thought to draw that in there. Hmm. Yeah, you know, he goes and talks to Peter Parker, um, goes to Peter Parker's house with that big bruise right there and whatever. So you're going to give us a figure that's bruised and supposed to be damaged without any bruises or damages? Hmm. I guess they wanted to keep it clean for the um, possibility of using him with the suits. But again, she just came with two extra heads if that was the case. But it is Hasbro. So moving on to the articulation. Um, disappointing if you're an Iron Man fan who wishes to do um, particularly a lot of posing like stances or whatever, landing stances, you know, that famous hero. Uh, land superhero landing I'm not gonna get that um, but yeah so you got the 360 typical 360 uh, rotation then you have his arm only going up but so hard so high um, because this is blocking it now some of the other figures would actually lift up and you'd be able to do that now on this one again it's a reissue so they're really cheap um, you get the four wrists again flex Basically, so this way you can be able to shoot the, the repulsor rays, as you can see here. Um, you would have to actually bend the arm a little so you can get that full 
upwards motion. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, it is a little peg there for the repulsory. Uh, there you go. You can see a lot better now for the repulsory projectile that you put in there. Um, same thing with the feet as well. If you can see that. Okay. Um, again, going back to the articulation. Double elbow. Now the problem with this is you have to actually lift this up here. In other words, this bottom joint here, lift this up here, and then lift this here. Otherwise, you don't get a full range of motion because this part of the forearm clips into this part of the bicep, and it stops it from getting that full bend. Um, so yeah, uh, you get a upper torso rotation, 360. Uh, you don't get a lower one for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe it hurts the integrity of the suit. I don't know. Um, then you get none, absolutely none when it comes to range of motion because I don't consider this range of motion at all. That's like, you know, he can barely kick a soccer ball. Um, as you can see, it goes with that far. It goes a little further back, ironically. I guess so. It looks like he's flying. I don't know. Um, you get the double knees. Upper thigh rotation. Um, don't know why when he's you know can't even kick but so much, but whatever. Uh, ankles and then the rocker pivot. Um, so yeah, so that pretty much um, sums up Iron Man and uh, Spider Man. I'll do a close up so you can see the details. Since like I said before, I'm not gonna really get too much into it. I mean, but you can pretty much see for yourself, you know, he's a pretty much detailed compared to a lot of the other crappy figures they put out in the past. So then they're, they're, they're trying, they're trying. Uh, and that's not trying hard enough. Now, to the whole point of buying this whole set, Spider-Man. Um, I, I am happy, but I'm also disappointed because first things first, this is supposed to be a screen accurate Spider-Man. I've seen customs that were a little more accurate. But I, actually, I saw one yesterday that was definitely more spot on. And it's the smaller um, MCU figure. And if it wasn't for the fact that he was a small MCU figure, I might have bought him, but not for the price range that he was asking for it. Plus the fact that in all honesty, um, yeah, we should have got that with this figure. So, um, yeah. Uh, <sighs> main issue. First thing, first, most important, that spider. For those of you who know, Spider is completely different on the suit. That was one of the first things that people pinpointed. Um, then you're supposed to have like little lines drawn in here. There's none of that at all whatsoever. One of the most important things about this suit, which made it stand out, at least to me, was the fact that if you look here, you're supposed to be able to see what's supposed to look like little web cartridges. Now, granted, the web cartridges were black, but they were supposed to stand out. And they're there. They're actually sculpted in. But because, one, they're not fully painted correctly. And because the way that the black is painted on, they blend in. So you don't even see them. It's like, what the hell? It's, it's ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, that kind of kills it for me just a little bit. Um, other than that, the suit itself, pretty darn accurate. Um, so that's kind of cool. Uh, you can kind of see here where they tried to do the mask. Don't really give it as much justice. I'm pretty sure uh, customizers will come in and add some carvings in there or sculpts in there, make it look more accurate. Sucks when a customizer has to charge you an arm and a leg just to give you a hassle it's supposed to give you. So uh, let's talk about the articulation. Articulation is so so. Um, for those of you who have the Spider Man or know about the Spider Man Peter Parker wave that's coming out with Miles Morales and Ultimate Spider Man. This figure is about the same size, I'm guessing. I don't have that one, so I don't know. But I'm guessing it's about the same size. Here's what's interesting. This one actually has that rocker. That uh, chest rocker, if you will. Um, that hinges right here at the top of the shoulder. Um, which is good for folding arms, whatever the case may be. So yeah, this one actually has it. The other ones do not. Why they removed it, I don't know. Whatever. Um, but yeah, so you have that. You have the 360 as the typical figures. Arm goes up. About yay high. Okay, full rotation. Uh, double elbows as usual. Now, one thing I will say is, besides the shield that's supposed to come with him, 
uh, not Captain America because of the scene, so they be able to replicate that same way he takes the shield from him. Um, Spider-Man has no other accessories. Normally, Spider-Man comes with an extra pair of hands or whatever the case may be. Not this time. He gets one hand and one fist. Well, rather, two hands. He gets one thrip hand and one fist. Now, here's what's funny. I know you're just looking at this one like, wait, he has two thrip hands. The cool thing about this, the cool thing is that if you take your, if you have one, Amazing Spider-Man 2 figure, the hands fit. The only difference is that it's a brighter red. You can't see it as much, but yeah, when you look closely, I don't know how much of it you can see, it's definitely a much brighter in comparison to the contrast of the arm. Um, fiddlesticks. Black Panther fell. I'll get him in a minute. But yeah, you can really more or less see it there on the inside. As I point out here, definitely you can see much darker in comparison. So yeah. Um, but you can swap those out, which is a good thing. So that's what I've done. Um, but moving on. So you have the head can go down that far. You can look up that far. Uh, 360, no pivot. Some of the figures have them, some of the figures don't. This is one that doesn't. Uh, nice little ab crunch to look up for crawling purposes. Um, pretty cool. Then you have this here, which I'm not too fond of because you have the leg that comes up here and then you twist and that's how you get your sidekick or your splits or whatever. And I have a problem with that. Now, with that being said, there's something I must mention. I'm going to assume all the figures have this. It's just that some are more prominent than others. This leg, when doing this, you have to be careful, because, or both legs for that matter, they pop off very easily. You can pop them back on, but they pop off very easily. Um, ironically, you know, it kind of has that G.I. Joe thing going on, as you can probably see. But the problem is, is that with G.I. Joes, they're more locked in. Even with the Captain America and Iron Man, they're more locked in. This one's not so much. I mean, you can even look at like one of the older figures here, which I'm going to do a bigger comparison with later. And see how it's more locked in. So this way you don't have that issue. Um, but yeah. So I, I do have an issue with that. Uh, other than the white lines not being there. I have an issue. No more twist at the boot. Um, you have the rocker. The ankle rocker which is cool. Goes up so far. Goes down all the way. Um, yeah. Both knees. Uh foes at the joint, so that pretty much covers it. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know if I covered this or not, but you get the full wrist, you get the up or down for the flipping. The other hand does it as well, the ones that I swapped them out for, it does it as well. So that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. The other thing is this, the shield. Let's talk about the shield for a second. The shield bothers me, because the fact of the matter is that us getting the shield even though we got Spider-Man in this set, for you to put Spider-Man in this set, not by himself, it was a money grab. Excuse the phone. For some of you who are Deadpool fans, you'll recognize that. Um, but yeah, moving on. Um, yeah, for you to pack, pack, pick, nah, for you to pack Spider-Man into this bundle, it's definitely a money grab because you made us pay twice, maybe three times depending on which ones you bought, but you have to pay twice to get. Steve Rogers and to get um, Iron Man heads and to get them again just to get Spider-Man. Um, you know, and then you give us the shield and the shield is battle damage and I get that because there's supposed to be battle damage. But the problem is one, the shield was never this damaged in the movie and it takes away the accuracy and the point of the scene um, with Spider-Man because when Spider-Man took it from Captain America, it was clean. Which means now you have to go and buy that other one in order to get the clean shield. So again, a money grab. So, yeah, a problem. Um, the cool thing about this is, for those who may care, or customizers, the scratch is on here, because I bought this set for my son as well, for his birthday. Um, which brings up to another issue. The Spider-Man on my son, some of the paint is starting to wear off on his upper thigh. Uh, yes, I get it to my son, because he's going to be nine, and he doesn't care. And he's going to probably wear it down regardless anyway, but I care. So yes, I swapped them out, whatever, bad dad, whatever. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that's one issue. The other issue is, you know, like I said, the shields are different. They're all marked differently, so that's kind of cool if you're into that. Um, my other problem, main problem is with the shield, like I was keep trying to say, 
one loop is wider than the other and I get it so you can slide it on the arm but here's my major gripe okay so you want to give us this figure and you want to give us Captain America and you want to give us the shield right now you can see here Captain America has a shield harness on now I understand that you probably have a Captain America that you can do this for but why not do it with all the Captain Americas it seems simple right uh, you basically you just put a peg back here either underneath here or inside there, it doesn't matter, put a peg back there and then what you do is you put, or a peg hole I should say, put a peg back here and what you do is the peg has a clip, you put it on the arm and it holds there and that's that. Um, if you want the more realistic look there's other ways to get around it but you don't have to because the point of the matter is by hitting the peg there, fit it on his back and then you have the straps already there. Uh, you don't necessarily need the straps for Spider-Man because it'll, the position is going to hold the shield, you're not going to really see the understraps anyway when you're posing it. Um, again, the one strap that's longer, I mean, wider than the other, not really necessary, um, but whatever. So, you know, I feel like this. If you're going to give us the figure, it makes sense. If you're going to give us the shield, have him wear the shield, um, you know, whatever. But don't just give us, like, 25 different accessories and have us switch them out. I'm sorry, um, as I'm thinking about it, it's just starting to depress me even more. But uh, yeah, so that, that's the other issue I had with it. Um, so yeah, let's talk size comparison. I'm going to have a size comparison real quick of the figures, because they are pretty much in scale, which is something cool that they're starting to do with their figures now. They're starting to put them more in scale. I noticed that with the latest Avenger figures, so that's kind of cool. So basically, as I angle the camera downwards, you can see here that you got Tony Stark, uh, Steve Rogers, and Peter Parker. Pretty much size proportionate, since he's a teenager, he would be the smallest or the shortest. Um, I do think his shoulder span should be a little wider, because Holland's shoulder span is a little wider. But other than that, um, pretty much pretty good scale of the height, as you can see. You know, I think that's kind of cool. Um, so yeah. You have that, and then you have um, the other Spider-Man figures. So it says you got Pizza Spidey. Uh, ignore the accessories I have on him. It's my figure. I can do what the hell I want with him. But yeah, um, so <laughs> you got Pizza Spider. You have Amazing Spider-Man 2 Spidey, the Andrew Garfield figure. Um, and that's comparison. As you can see, Pizza Spidey is taller. Then comes Amazing Spider-Man. Then comes um, Holland. Um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it, unless anybody has any comments they want to share, um, any other questions, um, no, the heads cannot swap, his head is the smallest, it will not fit, the hands will not fit, except for this Spider-Man's, this hands, the only ones that can swap out and back and forth, due to the size of the arms and the hands, as you can see, pretty small, um, so yeah, uh, hmm. If I was to rate this box set, well, let's see. If I could rate the figures individually, how would I rate it? I would probably rate Iron Man. Well, let's be honest. The only thing I like about Iron Man is the head sculpt. That's it. Captain America, mm, take them or leave them. I mean, you know, again, I didn't buy these figures to get these figures. I bought set to buy Spider-Man. So as far as I'm concerned... Um, if you ask me about Tony Stark and Steve Rogers, who cares? Who, who cares? I don't care. Black Panther doesn't care. Who cares? Um, Spider-Man. The, the figure, I would say, gets about three out of five spiders, only because of the fact that it was a big disappointment. I was expecting more, and part of that's on me, because I was expecting more. I should have known better. I'm hoping that when Figure Arts comes out with Spider-Man, it will be this particular suit, because I know that they're going to be a lot more accurate. They're definitely going to be a lot more accurate. And the possibility is going to be tremendously, like, just sick. Um, but again, um, like I said, uh, yeah, disappointed. Disappointed with the joints here coming out. Still disappointed with this. There's no excuse for this. None. None. Your company's making too much money for you to splash and paint on here. If a customizer can do it in, like, five seconds with like regular custom paint, a company that makes these can definitely do it. There's no excuse for that. So yes, I, that does bother me. I know for some, they're like, you're nitpicking. No, 
there's just no excuse. So if you paying $20 for a figure that used to be $7, $20 for a figure, NECA doesn't charge $20 for their figure, and they're fully detailed, like on McFarlane, not even, they surprised McFarlane, because if you look at some of the stuff McFarlane does, his, uh, his molds are not as on point as they used to be. And I think he's better off with doing the sculpting for his comic characters than he is for real life characters because he's doing the Walking Dead stuff now. But yeah, I mean, you know, NECA's figures is like, I think a few dollars less, like $14, depending on the figure, $14 to $18, depending on the figure and the store they're selling them. And again, figures are a lot bigger, more detailed. So in other words, just spending more money on plastic. So there's no excuse because Hasbro's always saying the same thing. So with that being said, you get a big fox fuck you. That's what happens, Hasbro. You get a big fox fuck you. Why? Because this is ridiculous. You couldn't even fix the right spider? No. Um, yeah, it seems like minor details that I'm ticked off about, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, so that's my review, and I'm sticking to it.